This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Well, we turn now to Brazil, where thousands of people marched Wednesday in one of the largest protests of the 2014 World Cup. Members of the homeless workers movement blocked a major freeway in Sao Paulo to protest massive spending on the tournament and to call for more affordable housing. The idea today was not to schedule a meeting. The idea today was simply to denounce the construction companies, which donate great sums to political campaigns in this country. The idea of this act is also to put pressure on legislators to vote on the city's general plan and budget. To talk more about this and what's happening overall in Brazil, Dave Zirin is still with us, author of Brazil's Dance with the Devil, the World Cup, the Olympics, and the Fight for Democracy. He's outside Maracanã Stadium in Rio de Janeiro. Uh, Dave, talk about what's happening there right now. Well, the protests are happening, and thank goodness for Democracy Now! and other independent news outlets for even uh, giving coverage to this so people know. Yesterday, there was a demonstration of four to 500 teachers right in the middle of Rio de Janeiro. Uh, they were protesting uh, for basically the, for their co-workers who went on strike in protest against FIFA and the World Cup priorities, uh, saying we want FIFA quality schools. Their co-workers who went on strike were actually fired, which is a violation of Brazilian law. So 500 teachers were marching behind a banner that said FIFA FIFA go home, demanding that uh, their co-workers actually be rehired. There was no violence at the end of this demonstration, fortunately, yet in Porto Alegre, in Sao Paulo, as you reported, uh, there, there was violence put on by the police. I mean, there is so much police pressure on demonstrators right now, uh, whether it's mass arrests, whether it's the use of concussion grenades, whether it's the use of tear gas, and as we've also seen, even the use of live ammunition. And what's so ironic about all of this is that at the same time, you see behind me the Maracanã. Yesterday, uh, 75 uh, Chilean fans uh, rushed the stadium, knocked down the gates, and actually damaged all sorts of property. And they were, they were just let out, and they've been asked to leave the country in the next three days, while demonstrators who don't do one-tenth, one-one-hundredth of the property damage that took place at the Maracanã uh, have been subject to all sorts of physical and torment. Uh, and, Dave, obviously, these protests uh, will not end when the World Cup ends, because in, in another two years, there is going to be the Olympics, and there's more construction planned, isn't there? Absolutely. Uh, just yesterday, I was at a favela called Villa Autodromo. Uh, I had visited there two years ago. It was the home of 500 families. Now it's the home of 350 families. The great crime of Villa Odromo is that they happen to be next door to what is going to be the Olympic Village. Ten yards away, the Olympic Village is being constructed, and here's this favela that has been there for decades. And when I went there, I, I was prepared to see one out of every three homes destroyed, which is what I saw, and it was a very upsetting thing to see. What I didn't expect to see was the fact that many of the trees had been uprooted from Villa Autodromo. What I didn't expect is people telling me that the trash had not been collected uh, and that streetlights were only on sporadically. Uh, one of the residents there described it as psychological torture being put on the favela by the city to encourage them to move or accept payouts and leave so that whole area can be developed for Olympic construction. The context in which all of this is taking place, Dave, uh, that you say most are not responding to, um, you just tweeted this morning, invitation and resources for World Cup journalists to end the stigma, catalytic communities. Explain. Absolutely. Catalytic Communities is an NGO here in Rio. They do amazing work. They started the initiative called Rio on Watch, which people can go online and check out. And what they're trying to do is dispel a lot of the myths about favelas, the reality of favelas. The reality is that favelas are not slums. Uh, they, they are living, live communities, and they're places that uh, should be protected and not become casualties of the World Cup Olympic rush. And they're trying to aid journalists so they do real reports about the favelas and not things that either exist exoticize them or speak about them in the worst, harshest possible terms, like places like the Daily Beast, which just did a, an article on it, which I think people can read it for themselves, has 50 things wrong with it in terms of how they actually discuss the favelas. And, and Dave, could you talk a, a little about the role of FIFA in terms of all of these uh, development projects that occur wherever the, the World Cup goes? Absolutely. I mean, FIFA, the organization that oversees international soccer, they make a series of demands on a host country if they're going to go there. Those demands involve security and surveillance. They involve infrastructure. They involve building new stadiums. And they involve a willingness to put up tons of debt. 
Now, it's worth saying Brazil as a nation is not a victim in the FIFA relationship, n nor is any country that hosts the World Cup, because there are always interests in the country that benefit greatly from FIFA being there. For example, in Brazil, the most powerful industry, you might call it the equivalent of the natural gas and oil industry in the United States, is construction. And so building new stadiums, new infrastructure, all the rest of it, that's a huge boon to the powerful construction industry in Brazil. So they love that FIFA's here. That's why I've, I've described it as a neoliberal Trojan horse, because it comes in and people are supposed to be excited about soccer and hosting this big party. But in reality, it pushes through a series of development programs, which are mainly for the benefit of big construction, big real estate, and tourist, and, and tourist money coming in, and not for the people who actually have to live here once the cameras is le have left and once the confetti has all been swept away. And how Brazilians feel about the World Cup? Uh, their team tied Mexico 0-0 Tuesday. Well, it's interesting. I watched uh, Brazil play Mexico in Favela Asa Branco, right next to Favela Vila Otrodromo, and everybody gathered around to watch it. And what was fascinating is everyone was really into soccer. Not everybody was rooting for Brazil. And for a lot of folks here, rooting against the national team is actually a point of pride, given all the disagreements that people have with FIFA and the government and how they've implemented the World Cup. That was a very interesting thing to see.